All right, in continuing, this is what we had done so far. Compiled some photo reference, put it into a Photoshop file. It's 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. And I will open that up. And at this point, you're just kind of getting used to the idea of your subject matter. And so I've got some references here. I could always add more. And then the last thing I did in the last video was I started what's called rotoscoping with a slightly textured brush on top of one of my references. So I painted this, right? The next thing I did was to bring that down, bless you, and then use free transform to make it big enough to paint. And then at this stage, I can start kind of filling in the blank space and refining it, you know, using my reference. But then I kind of realized I'm going to spend a lot of time on this and it's not, it's going to be funny. It's a cat licking itself, but it doesn't really look particularly like any particular cat, like my cat. So, Sometimes you have to do things a little bit to have different ideas. And so I decided to look at my cat some more and take some more pictures. I'm going to go ahead and lay that color over, though. There we go, something like that. Um, and what I got was this photo. And I manipulated it a little bit because I was thinking of kind of a teardrop shape. And I was thinking of Rene Magritte's painting of this floating rock in the sky. And I thought it might be fun to kind of show, show him as kind of a teardrop, almost minimal composition, similar to here. And that's actually pretty good too, so, but to play with the, the orientation of it. So what might that look like? Well, if I open this up in Photoshop, this is kind of customizing my reference, right? Then I can open this one up too. And I kind of want to decide what's the better portrait. That will show the personality of my subject matter. And then in a composition that's kind of more interesting, right? And yeah, I think I like this one. So I'm going to rasterize it to make a better photo reference. I am going to just do some quick adjustments on it. Just sharpen it just a tiny bit. Can even use a filter and sharpen because this is what I'm going to be looking at to kind of see how everything works. And I want to see it really clearly. And then I want to see it maybe on a white background. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool and just drag it inside my cat here because the edges are pretty clear. Duplicate it onto its own layer, right? And then I could even play with background, even though we're not required to do a background for this project, because you can always add a background later. But I might play with kind of fitting it into this kind of composition. See how that works. And then since we've been playing with AI tools a little bit, this is Photoshop 2024, this is the Adobe class, I can show you how easy it is to use the generative AI just by using the magic wand, select this empty space, 
I might overlap it a little bit. Because this is just the background of a René Magritte painting, a French, Belgian, I think, surrealist, in the early 20th century. And then I'm going to say edit fill, but instead of fill, I'm going to say generative fill. You have to agree to the guidelines, and then you're just going to say, um, actually, I'm not going to say anything, because it will use its AI to try to match what's there if I don't say anything. And it will give me three variations. I could say fill with clouds to match. Or I could just say sky and clouds to match. But it should figure it out on its own. So that's one option. You can always do it again. Let me rasterize that. I'm going to select these little seams because this gives me some fun stuff to work with. So this is like compositing an idea for a painting. I like how the clouds are all gathered at the bottom. And then I'm going to say edit generative fill. I'm going to say clouds and sky to match instead of just letting it sample what it thinks I want. <clears throat> I'm going to tell it I don't want any rock in it at all. I almost did what I wanted. And then the old way of doing this is something called content aware. And it's a type of AI too. AI is not the right term for any of these things. But all I do is say edit, fill, and then instead of with white, gray, black, we say content aware. And content aware will sample the pixels around it and fill it with something close. So it actually did a pretty good job, you know, making up clouds to extend the borders of this reference, right? So all these clouds are made up by the AI, whereas all content aware can do is sample from pixels that are already in the image. So these again are some good uses of the, the generative AI tools to help your reference. We're never completing work with it, at least not for this class, but um, for creating reference that is helpful. All right. So to me, that, that composition really kind of works for the art historical reference I'm going for. So now I've got that reference. I'm going to save it. I'll just save it as a JPEG. And I'll call it the Magritte Teardrop. copy. Right. And I'm actually going to keep that open in another tab. But what I'm also going to do is have it open in, there it is, just in preview off to the corner. So this is what you sometimes call in a digital workflow a hero reference. You might have lots of stylistic references. You know, this might be one of them. There's all of these that I put together. But this is the hero reference. And so I can also bring it in to my image. And then if there are other references I want to use, I was kind of interested in all the blues and I looked for minimal kind of teardrop compositions. I thought this one might be helpful as well. Also, because I want to, I don't want to do the kind of photorealistic type of brushwork that Rene Magritte does. 
I want to play with more color. I want to play with more texture. So this will free me up. So I'm going to get rid of this shape sketch study. And I can just delete it. And I'm going to make a new one. So a new layer. These are all references now. I can put this all together as reference. Right. Lock it. Label it. And so since I've changed direction a little bit on my painting concept, I'll show you how I started again. So I'm going to do a new blank layer. I'm going to call this my shape painting or my shape painting sketch. And I'm going to zoom in to my hero reference. I'm going to give myself a lot of painting area. by making the screen nice and big. Then I'm going to use my tablet and I'm going to use my brush. And I'm going to look at my brush settings, which you can find under window as well. I'm going to look at texture, shape dynamics, the jitter, try it out. Yeah, that's pretty good. So with this brush, I'm going to steal some colors and I'm going to start with not very typical ones. I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. And let me actually fix something with the brush dynamics. Oh, the minimum diameter. I want that to get a lot smaller so that I can get thinner when I need to. There we go. And when I push harder, it's going to give me more. Okay, then I'm going to get some of this color in there right away. Now, if you remember when we did our creature design, it's very helpful. This is just kind of shape painting, but it's very helpful to keep in mind the anatomy. You know, the cranium, the spine, the collarbone, the joints. All that stuff. And if it helps to do a sketch like that, you certainly can. But I'm trying to treat this one more just like a shape painting. And I'm not going to use black. I'm going to steal these colors, which are all kind of variations in blue. And then I might add a few of my own. Anytime I can turn off my reference and see what I'm actually painting, but I'm just trying to block out the white or block out the, the creature, the whole thing. And I do it on a gray background so that I can see what's lighter and what's darker. And with this textured brush, even when I paint with something that's quite light, you can see how it, it already kind of fills in and blends with what's already there. So this is just a brush that's built into Photoshop. It's one of the kind of pastel brushes. It's called Happy HB. It's by this brush design, designer that gives away a lot of free brushes that partnered with Photoshop. So they're always called Kyle's brushes but we're going to make our own brush today too for the next step and you're going to see there's nothing really to it there's nothing you should ever have to pay for to make a brush it's really about understanding the brush settings i want to get some of these more intense colors in there and you want to do this at full opacity right Even get some of these reds in there, some maroons. And it's important that you don't just paint with just solid black and white. You always have a little bit of color in there. Because this is digital painting, not digital coloring. We want a lot of that 
variation. 